Hello and welcome to Cav Simulations. Today I want to share some exciting news with you and a big major update to our uh, firmware and the natural integration with MobiFlight that we now have. Um, first thing I want to do is just quickly talk through how all of our new displays are now working with this new system and how our existing displays, the FCU and EFIS, will work with this as well. Now this is still in the beta stage of MobiFlight, so it's not been pushed to the, the major release, so you need to be in the beta version in order to do this. So if you don't want to use the beta yet, that's fine, just carry on using our existing firmware with version um, 10 and just keep using it as normal. Um, but if you want to try out our new devices, you'll have to do this because they won't work with the old firmware. But this will be coming to the next major release of MobiFlight, so it's going to be coming out very soon. So. If you want to try this, first thing you need to do is make sure you're using the beta version of MobiFlight. So we're just going to open up MobiFlight and we want to go to Extras, Settings. And we want to make sure that under the beta versions we have this box ticked, yes I'd like to receive the beta version updates. Make sure that's ticked, click OK, exit and reload and then that will make um, sure that MobiFlight is working uh, to, with the beta version. Um, if you want to double check, once you open it and it's been installed, it'll be 10.0.2.1 or, or it may be it may be 2.2 uh, or something, depending on the date of when you're watching this video. But in the beta, this is the current one and it should say um, MobiFlight Connector Beta as well. Now, then what you want to do is right click Open File Location. So right click the MobiFlight connector location or just go to your app data local MobiFlight connector. And what you want to do in here is make sure that under community, CAV simulations, and if you open up this config directory here, um, you should see MCC files and MFMC files. If you open that up and you see some aircraft, uh, at least those there, um, and these configs here. If you open that up, then you don't need to do the next step. It's ready to go. If they're not there, i.e. it's version 10.2.1, um, then you just need to download the um, this file from my GitHub repo, and that will have all these files that you can just paste in. But this, but depending on the date when you watch this video, these files may already be there. So first, just check that under the config directory, uh, so community cav simulations config if you have these here and you have these files then you don't need to do any download and you can just, just go straight to the next step of um, you know, setting up MobiFlight. If they're not there you just want to go to github.com slash cav simulations choose MobiFlight custom devices and then under releases click the latest release there and just click the, um, the zip file to download that file. Now I've already done that, that's the, um, the, the downloaded file there, and then I've just extracted it here to my desktop. And if we open that up, we will see this folder here, and we have this community folder here. Now if we go back to the MobiFlight connector, we see there's a community folder here, so we just want to go to this root directory. We want to take this community folder, which contains CAV simulations, boards, configs, devices and firmware. We just want to take that community folder, drag that into here, and then we'd want to just click replace the files in the destination. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that, but you would just click replace the files in the destination and then you will then have in here all of the appropriate ones but you make sure you click replace because we want to overwrite the old files that are there as well now we have uh, everything set up it's a simple case of just opening up the MobiFlight connector now we're going to treat this because it's beta as a, a new setup so don't try and update your old setup yet because this is still in beta testing so we want to just make sure we do this from new so just to avoid any confusion i'll just make sure that we're not messing around with anything so let's just do a complete new setup we will do transferring of other configs and merging later let's just get the devices working for now now this is the really cool bit that I want to thank Sebastian and Ralph from MobiFlight for their hard work on getting us here um, and making this integration so cool. 
Now we just want to click the MobiFlight modules as we did here, and we can see we've got a um, Arduino uh, board connected. Um, now all we have to do is click Update Firmware, and we're going to choose CAV Simulations now and CAV Mega. It is as simple as that. You may or may not see those there. Just don't worry about those. We want the one with the CAV Simulations logo, and we just want to click CAV Mega. That's just going to flash the firmware straight to the board. You haven't got to do any manual stuff. It's all done in MobiFlight. Firmware update was successful. So now we can see we have a CAV Mega board here and the, uh, the firmware version 2.5.1 for this beta test. Now, this is the next major cool thing. We can now add a device and under custom devices, we have all of our displays here. Now, I'm going to start with just the, uh, the FCU for now, um, just to show you how this works. So you choose now the pins that you want. You don't have to use the hard-coded pins. You can choose whatever pins you want for this, and then you can name it whatever you want. So let's call this uh, FCU, just for simplicity, and we'll give it pins two, three, four. And then once we've set up all of our devices, the way on the pins that we want them, we then just literally click Upload Config. Uh, this is a little bug because it's beta testing here, so. And then once that's done, upload finish. And now we have an FCU device set up on the uh, on the Arduino. We can quickly test that. Let's just put a blank line in here. And we're just going to click edit. And we go to display. We can see that we've got the CAV Mega module. It's a custom device. And we can choose the FCU. And then here we can choose all of the available functions before. None of this... Uh, writing the code you can just choose the functions so if we want to show the speed value then we can put in there dollar and then we can use this test function down here so it's a much easier and natural integration much more clear around what is exactly being done and how to manage that um, so that's the beauty of uh, this new natural integration it really is a part of MobiFly. Okay, so what I want to demonstrate now is we have our uh, config files that came with the directory uh, in the MobiFlight um, directory we mentioned earlier. So what I'd recommend doing is just copy and pasting them out of there to your desktop or something, um, or you can access them directly from there. Just navigate to that directory um, in here. So we can just go to the configs, um, and we can just copy and paste that directory. Um, and then click open and we can paste it go straight into there and here we can see we have the MCC files or the MFMC files or as you said you could just go to your desktop wherever you pasted it but here we can just access them directly so we want the MobiFlight board configuration files um, or MobiFlight um, module configuration files and here I've created three for you I've got the glare shield the overhead and the pedestal now each Arduino can support up to six devices so the glare shield will have the three uh, EFIS FCU EFIS the overhead will have the two battery voltage displays and the uh, two radio displays for the RMP3 in the overhead. Not every aircraft has that simulated. I don't think the fly-by-wire does, but we do have that uh, available in the configuration. And then the most densely packed one is the pedestal board with uh, radio one and two, um, the TCAS display, and of course the rudder trim. So let's just take a quick look at the glare shield. Um, here we can see I have the FCU EFIS left and right set up here. Just go in and choose your pins as appropriate. This demo config comes with the original hard-coded ones. So you, if you're using those hard-coded pins, you can then just click that, click upload, because we've opened it. We now need to upload that to the board. So we can just click upload config. And then that is finished. That is exactly what we want there. So then we can just click OK out of that. Now we have our board set up. Now we can open, uh, no, because that's just an empty one. We can go up a directory, back to the Mobi Flight configuration files, connector configuration files, and here we just have the fly-by-wire set up. We will choose the Glare Shield config.
which matches our glare shield thing. Now this is the important thing. You're going to see this orphan serials found because obviously I created the configs on my Arduino, which is this one. So you need to just click whichever you see here and you want to click this assign button. And this is really important because that will say, hey, everything that is cav mega glare shield on that assign it to my cav mega glare, sh uh, glare shield on the one i've just created it's really important that you click that and then click assign and then click ok and then you'll never see that message again but now we have our display set up here it's very similar to the original one there is some slight changes i've had to make to it to make it work with the new version of moby fly and this new integration obviously just click save there um, to make sure that it's uh, then linked to your device, but I'm not going to do that because I'm using a different one. Um, so I had to make a couple of changes here. So there were, again, this is in beta, so some bug fixes will be coming. But here, you can literally now just click the uh, the test button, and you should see everything cycle through on your display as expected, coming out of that uh, newly updated uh, firmware. Now we can see, as we said earlier, in here. And showing the speed value through this setup here. But now I want to talk to you about our new displays, the rudder trim, the battery voltage and the radio TCAS. So let's open up a go back to configs and the configuration files. Let's choose the pedestal because that has uh, loads of them in. So we can see we have the radio panel left one for the active section one for the standby the right one the TCAS and the rudder trim and just while we're here as well let's look at the overhead and you can see we've got the battery one battery two and then there's an active and a standby for the RMP3 and the overhead as well um, so yes let's uh, while we're here let's have a look at that let's upload that config to the board so it's now an overhead board finished perfect and then let's open I don't want to save those changes no Let's open the overhead configurator here. And then again, we have to do this orphan serial, assign, okay. So here, with the battery one voltage and the battery two voltage, as I said earlier, there's, there's no, uh, it's not actually uh, simulated, I believe in the flyby wire, but we still have one there in case it's a different aircraft. You can, you can see how we're managing the, the radios here. Yeah, so as we can see, we've got the overhead there as well. So let's now just do the last one here. Let's open up the pedestal. And we'll upload that config there. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then open up the pedestal configuration there yeah and we will assign our new device to that and here we can see they have the RMP left the RMP right we have our TCAS and our rudder trim as well those are all there all running um, as we would expect so yeah please do feel free to play with these have a look around with them um, test them out let me know how they're working for you um, but yeah best thing of all the now pure actual integration with Moby Flight is what we're we're really excited about and having this ability to make it much easier to get set up there's no um, drop dragging and manual ups updating of firmware and anytime this is the other thing as well if we do push a new release of firmware it would all be handled natively in here. You would just click the update firmware. You'd even be prompted for it whenever there's a new release as well. That's all being done by us in the back end now with this um, new MobiFly integration. So it's a much easier uh, and friendly experience, which means you can just get to flying quicker using our displays, which is really what we're, we're so excited about. So hopefully this enables you to get up and running with our new devices. Um, as I said, this is just the beta version. Once this goes to main, you will definitely never have to do any of this uh, GitHub stuff. It will all happen in here. Um, just while it's in beta, you may have to copy and paste uh, those files over just to make sure you've got the, 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 the absolute newest versions. 
Um, but if you uh, have a newer version of the beta 10.2.1 and you see that those files are already in there, then you definitely don't have to do this. If they're already there, then they're there. You haven't got to do anything. But yeah, I really hope that you enjoy this, guys. It's been a lot of hard work. And as I said, I want to send a massive thanks again to Sebastian and Ralph from Flight because they put a lot of work into this, helping me get this where I want it to be. So plenty of great more things to come in the future. Um, I want to wish you a happy holidays and a happy new year. So thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.